I express on behalf of my country gratitude for having fixed this hearing at such a short notice. I want to commence by assuring this court that the situation in which we find ourselves is grave, it is urgent, and it is for that reason that we have sought the indulgence of this court for a hearing for the indication of provisional measures. I shall, Mr. President and esteemed members of the court, first give you a brief overview of the facts and then address you on the following four issues. The jurisprudence of this court as to the principles for indication of provisional measures. The prima facie case as to the jurisdiction of this court to entertain India's application. The prima facie case of violation of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations 1963. And finally, I would state the nature of the provisional measures that India seeks. The Republic of India, I shall be referring to it as India, has moved this application under Article 40 of the Statute of this Court, seeking relief from this Court to remedy egregious violations of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations 1963. I shall be referring to it as the Vienna Convention. It is against the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, who I shall be referring to as Pakistan. An Indian national, Mr. Kulbhushan Sudhir Jadhav, whom I shall refer to as Jadhav, was allegedly arrested on the 3rd of March 2016 and has been in custody. He was tried by a military court in Pakistan and has been convicted and sentenced to death, which sentence was confirmed on 10th of April 2017. It is not in dispute that India has made innumerable requests since March 2016 for consular access. Pakistan admittedly did not provide consular access. India claims that the rights of the individual and the rights of India under Article 36 of the Vienna Convention have been violated all along from the time of the alleged arrest of Jadhav. Pakistan did not inform the consular post of India about the arrest of Jadhav at the time of the alleged arrest and India received information of his arrest only on 25th March 2016. Despite India's requests, Pakistan has denied consular officers the right to visit Jadhav. They have refused to communicate to the consular officers the charges against Jadhav and the evidence and other material adduced against him in the so-called trial so as to enable them to arrange for his legal representation. The denial of access to Jadhav has resulted in consular officers of India being unable to arrange for legal representation of Jadhav and to assure themselves also of his safety and his well-being in custody. In a press briefing of 17th April 2007, 17, the Director General of Inter-Services Public Relations allegedly asserted that Jadha was not entitled to consular access. We have a copy of the press report which we annexed to the application as Annexure 7, which refers to the briefing but not this assertion. We now have another press report in a vernacular newspaper, Jahan Pakistan, of 18th April 2017, which evidences this assertion. India, Mr. President and esteemed members of the court, has applied to this court for redress of its grievances relating to these violations. Time as the application filed by India can be adjudicated upon by this court, India has also sought indication of provisional measures that would ensure that the sentence is not executed. 
If the provisional measures are not granted, the application would be rendered infructuous and it would bring about a situation where the court may find itself unable to grant effective relief as sought by India. I now address you, sir, on the principles for the grant of provisional measures. Article 41.1 of the statute of this court vests this court with the power, I quote, the power to indicate if it considers that circumstances so require any provisional measures which ought to be taken to preserve the respective rights of either party pending a final judgment in the case. In its judgment in a, commonly, in a case commonly referred to as the Legrand case, this court clarified that orders of provisional measures pursuant to Article 41 establish binding obligations. The court formulated the threshold for provisional measures in Costa Rica and Nicaragua in terms of what I call the plausibility standard. This court said that provisional measures would be granted, and I quote, if it is satisfied that the rights asserted by a party are at least plausible, end of quote. Finding that the rights claimed by Costa Rica were plausible, this court went on to observe, and I quote, whereas at this stage of the proceedings, the court cannot settle parties' claims to sovereignty over the disputed territory and is not called upon to determine once and for all whether the rights which Costa Rica wishes to see respected exist or whether those which Nicaragua considers itself to possess exist. Whereas for the purposes of considering the request for indication of provisional measures, the court needs only to decide whether the rights claimed by the applicant on merits and for which it is seeking protection are plausible. 